Of course, everyone wants to be a billionaire, but how? How do you get to achieve that? It's either you're doing something or you're doing something. Money just has to be made, and it means that you have to be intentional about making the money. Yes, today is Monday, and you know, every Monday at 11 a.m., we bring you SME Mart, where we explore business ventures in Nigeria. SME Mart, your radio business hub, where we explore business ventures in Nigeria. You're welcome on SME Mart. My name is Esther Alaribi, and SME Mart is sponsored by Eleganza Industrial City. Today on SME Mart, we're discussing how to set up a baby products business. So if you are that person, you've always admired that line of business, and you've just not been able to put your hands together or uh, Get lay your hands on information on how to set up the business or how to go about it. My guest today is going to be telling you all that you need to know about the business and how to start off going into it and also managing this business. My guest today, I'm going to be speaking to Ajolore Oshoyemi Uluwa Sheung, and she is the director of Kedmil Luxury, and we're discussing how to set up a baby product business. The four lines are open 07000-917-917, 07000-917-917, or you can send us a text or a WhatsApp message 07031756537 to be a part of the conversation on SME Mart today. All right. So you get to join the conversation 07000-917-917, or you can send us a text or a WhatsApp message, 070-317-56537. Listen live at the website, www.wfm917.com, as we get to bring in our guest. And we have the conversation today on how to set up our baby product business. Yes, sit tight, because this conversation is one that you really need to hear. Yes, I have my guest joining me this morning as we get to discuss how to set up a baby product business. My guest, Ajelore Oshoyemi Uluwasheo, Director of Kedmiu Luxury. Good morning, Uluwasheo. How are you doing today? I'm very, very good, ma'am. Thank you mm-hmm. for joining us today. Yes, ma'am. You're welcome. All right. So tell us about Kedmiu Luxury. You deal with baby product. How did you start off? And besides, at what point did you think, okay, I want to go into baby product? Because, yes, that business is one that actually makes money because people have children every single day. Every single day. People... People have been born everywhere across the country. So going into this business, how did you conceive the idea? Was it that you went to buy something one time and you were like, okay, I think this business is good. Let me go into it or how? Okay, thank you. Well, I just there was really no um, zeal for... Actually, when I was in school, I'm always selling stuff. I'm not selling slippers. I'm selling jeans, I'm selling round neck and all that. So I'm doing something. Mm. Yes, I was just doing something. Just that I love business, I want to venture into business. So when I was ready to actually start, I told I told my husband I I think I want to go into baby stuff. He was like, why? What's the what's the idea about it? I said nothing. I just feel like I love children. When I was in church, I'm always around children and all that. I think I just want to venture into something similar. And he was like, oh, okay. No problem. So I, I didn't know my bearing. I didn't know how to go about it at first. So I, the person I patronized during my first daughter, I went to meet her. I was like, I think I like this business. And I don't know how to go about buying this stuff in the market. Though I know the market very well. But in particular about baby stuff, I really don't know anything about it. Yeah. So she gave me some contacts and told me how to go about it. So that was how... I went to the market and got my stuff and all that. Then the Kedney Laundry, I wanted to register the business. Initially, I was using Kemas, but then when I wanted to register the business, they were like, the Kemas is already used. So I had to look for another name and all that. And that was how Kedney Laundry came up. Came up. So, and we've been, we've been in post production for about three years now. Mm. Yeah, Kedney Laundry is about three years now. Interesting. Okay, so um, <laughs> since this business has been operating, when you went to meet the, the other customer who used to patronize before, how was it? How was the transitioning for you? Like, even though I mean, from what you've said, you used to do a lot of business buying and selling here and there before, so it was not like it was new for you entirely in uh, in business. Yeah. But in this particular business, it was new. So, how did you start yeah. off? Did you have some kind of downtime at the beginning, or was it all rosy all the way up? Uh, yeah, to now? it wasn't all rosy. In the <laughs> okay, it wasn't because at the point I was actually very 
very down because I got a shock and I noticed that people were just coming and go. People were just coming and go. They'll be like, ah, the market is not full. And I'm, I'm like, ah, hmm. market is not full. I spent about 1.5 million naira in just buying the stuff. No shop rent inside, though. No furniture and all that. And by the time I'm going to say, okay, let me have all the furniture and the money I spent in buying the goods. That was about over 2 million naira. And people are now saying that the shop is not full. I was worried. I was down. I was almost discouraged. So then I was like, don't worry now. I will keep giving you money. So every month, either I sell or I don't sell, I will definitely go back to the market. I keep stocking. I keep restocking and keep restocking. Then about three months, I before then, I was on Instagram. I was going through, through people's things that have been into the business for a long time. Okay. I go there. I check how they've been operating and all that. Then I open a page to start following and trying to. I actually learned a lot though from them. So I started building my page gradually. Then I made my first sales on Instagram. I think it was about 250 then. I was actually very encouraged. I was like, ah, this person does not know me. And the page is still very scanty. I had about less than 20 followers mm-hmm. then. And she still patronized me. And that was how I started having that zeal. I'm like, I keep pushing. I keep pushing it. And still started coming in. And that was it. That was it. Hmm. So, wait, when people were saying that um, the shop wasn't full, even though you know how much you had invested in the business and you were still worried, was it was it coming from a place of uh, you were worried that people were not patronizing you because the shop was not full? Or it was you not making yeah. sales at that time that was the worry? Um, actually, it was because of people were complaining that the shop was not full. That was actually my worry. I know that business... You don't make sales almost immediately, especially in a new environment where you've, you've not been before. So I, I was not really bothered about making sales. I just wanted people to come. I wanted to do this awareness and all that. But I even did a fly at the point. I started doing free medical. My dad is a medical doctor. So I started doing free medical for people, just for them to notice the business, to notice the show. So I was not worried about sales. I was just worried that People were complaining that the shop wasn't full. That was just the worry. I see. So your support system was your husband who kept trying to tell you that everything would still fall in place. So now this amount of money you've mentioned, talking about the 1.5 million used in buying the products that you needed to start with. So does this mean that anybody who's going to start must have at least 1.5 million already? <laughs> that was uh, that 1.5 was three years ago. Yeah. Prices have doubled. Prices have gone so up that I'm sure that one point five will not even buy majority of what I bought then. Hmm. It should not buy majority of what I bought then because prices they are like times three now. Prices have gone up and you know majority of all these goods are being imported. And so once there's high in dollar, we affect all the goods. We affect almost everything. Everything. So I don't think by one point five would get that person exactly what I got then. I don't think so. Hmm. I see. Okay, so for somebody who is going to um, such business, some of the things that I've heard you say is go and talk to somebody who is in that line of business already. Talk to the person, yeah. find out how to start, maybe use their own vendors, but it has to be somebody that is trusted, right? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, then the next thing again, let's take for instance somebody who doesn't have all of the funds to get like a store. There are people who now do their business full-time online. Can the person still start off with that and maybe build their page so people get to trust them before they now transition into having a proper store? Sure. Well, the problem about that one was is that though it can, one can start from the house, but to get to a point where one, your customers will be like, they're having trust issues. That, okay, please give me your location. I want to come around. I want to check your shop. I have many of my customers online that did such, be like, please send me the address, I want to come. I don't want someone to scam me and all that. Even despite the fact that you've explained to them, mm. you're giving them assurance that you're not a scammer, but they still want to come around. So imagine me being in the house, it won't make anything. They'll be like, mm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I want to patronize this person. So if it was a mm. shop, if it was a shop, a, a location, I think it would, it would make more sense. But starting from the house, for a baby product, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea. Hmm. Okay. So, it was at the point when I left the shop, when I wanted to relocate, when I wanted to relocate, because, so I asked, I didn't get a shop almost immediately, so I had to bring down my goods down to the house. I was in the house for like about two months, and I know like three of my three customers, three new customers 
on Instagram that wanted to buy. I told them I was in the house. I was having issues with my previous location. They were like, ah, okay. And that was how they knew they didn't come. They didn't catch me up. So I understand that they were scared coming to my house. They don't know me. But if it was a shock, I know they'd be like, they'll feel comfortable coming around there. Mm. They understand? Yes, yes, yes. So, I see. Okay, so another thing I hear you say also is that social media also helps in this line yeah, of business. It helps. it helps a lot, but it needs a lot of patience, a yeah. lot of energy. There's so much rules about Instagram and all that, so one has to be very careful. And now TikTok is actually another best way to, to market one product, TikTok. But people don't underestimate the TikTok. It's actually a very good way also to make sure it's there. Mm. Okay. I hear you. Thank you so much for being on the program today. We hope that some other day you would also be able to talk about this um, when we have more time. Because really, this business I know, most times when you look at people who sell baby products, they are mostly women. We don't have a lot of men. I don't know. Maybe you know <laughs> men who are mostly in the market. But in the market, there are men actually in the market. In the, in the, in the market main market. Oh, okay. In the okay. Main market, yes, yes, I see. I see. But most men. times I get to see... I. Uh, women handle this business especially but all the same so where where can we find you someone wants to patronize you where's your store currently okay my current store is at governor's road in bejeleki that's a fire echo okay. very very easy on the road on the main road okay so and your instagram handle that's kedmi luxury Ked- that's my Instagram. There's no other Kedmi luxury on Instagram. I'm the only Kedmi luxury on Instagram. <laughs> okay, now bragging right, which is good, which is good. Thank you so much for being on SME Mats. You're welcome. And we wish you Thank success you in your business. Thank you very much. And Matt. also, my producer just whispered to me to say, today is your birthday, so this is we wishing you a happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. We wish you long life and Thank prosperity you. and all of the good things. Thank you very much. I'm, right. really, I'm really grateful. Yes, do have a wonderful day. I need to. Thank right. you very much. Okay, yes, and that was our guest, Ajelo Re Ushoyemi Uluwa Shio. Today is her birthday, and she still made her time to make it a date with us today on SME Ma, talking to us about how to set up our baby products business. So now you've heard from her. Man, that business is not cheap. Trust me, it's not cheap. So it means that if you're going to that business, you probably must have had some kind of savings or you have like a support system who is going to support you all of the way. I mean, in any business, you don't just expect that you start today and it kicks off today. So you need a lot, a lot of patience and you need to be ready to invest in the business so that you can gain whatever it is that you set out to achieve, all right? SME Mart is sponsored by the Ganza Industrial City. And on SME Mart, we promote entrepreneurship and we explore business ventures in Nigeria. Do want to join us again next Monday as we get to bring another business on radio and promote their business. And we also get to talk about the need to have more people starting off something for themselves, no matter how small. Just start. Start with what you have. Talk to people. There are people who have started small and they are making it big right now. So you can find such people and talk to them also. So yes, next week, Monday at 11 a.m., we get to showcase goods, products, and services. If you want to be part of SME Mart, you can send us an email at info, info at wfm917.com. Many thanks to you for being a part of today's edition of SME Mart. And do well to join us again next Monday. Listen to Tenny Hustle because, yes, it is Monday and money has to be made. WFM 91.7.